It was many years ago, maybe I think 70 years ago, that some chemists discovered that ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that one of those phosphates has a so-called high energy bond. So that's chemical energy. And that chemical energy is then theorized to be used in all different ways to run, to run the machines of our body, basically. You need energy, and that's where it comes from. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that became popular very quickly, that idea, because prior to that, there was no understanding of where we get our energy. And so the idea that we get our energy from ATP uh, is, was a popular one. However, Gilbert points out that one year later, some physical chemists wrote a paper, an extensive paper, suggesting that that's wrong. These guys made a mistake, a simple arithmetic error. There is no high energy bond in ATP. Um, and uh, Gilbert Ling proposed a different role for ATP, which we didn't go into at the moment. It's tangential from your, from your question. So, so the question remains unresolved. It unresolved in my mind and unresolved in, in perhaps the minds of some others because apparently nobody has taken up that, that objection. Nobody has said, yeah, I read the original paper and I read the objection and the guys who objected are right or the guys are wrong because they did X, Y, Z. It remains, it remains a question. Um, and almost nobody is willing to address the question because the idea that ATP is responsible for all the energy in our cells and our body, it's sacred. It's become absolutely sacred. And so when it's sacred, it's not easy to question uh, concepts that have become sacred that are in the literature and are accepted by generations of people. But it's not clear whether it's right or whether it's not right. And it needs to be addressed, seriously addressed by somebody who has the capability of doing it. And at the same time, I would like to suggest that if it turns out that ATP does not contain that energy or maybe contains some energy, but not all that much, there is this other source of energy that I've been talking about. And, and that is the electrical energy that comes from water. Um, it could represent a small fraction of the energy that we use, a modest fraction, a large fraction, or even conceivably all. I wouldn't go that far because we don't have the evidence for that, but at least some. So again. If you had to guess, how much do you think is coming from the, the water battery? Oh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, uh, 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 Usually, uh, l let me put it this way. You're familiar with Occam's razor, uh, yeah. the principle? Yeah. yeah. This, you know, you got two ideas. Um, and the simplest one is the, the one that's likely to be valid. Uh, you might say there's a corollary to it. And that is um, usually there's one mechanism, not two mechanisms. Um, and, and, and usually it's the simpler one. I think the electrical one is so simple. It really, all it involves is is the breakup of a water molecule into uh, plus and minus and, and they or self-organize in, in, in this way and they use the energy ultimately from the sun. This is simple. Um, other, other ideas, um, you know, are more complicated. And if you were to immerse yourself as I didn't do because I, 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 uh, I, I it, it was too complicated uh, um, into a course in, in biochemistry where they talk about metabolism and where you get your energy. I was, I was advised to not take that course as a student. Actually, it was a young faculty member. I was just sitting in um, a course taught by a well-known professor who was very clear. And, and I sat in on the first part that dealt with proteins and such, and it was interesting. And I was advised to not sit in the second part. It was about biochemistry and energetics. And it was so complicated that basically it's, it's a, a memorization of numerous steps in a, a very complicated process that's not completely understood. So you take your choice. If, if you have to choose one, which would you choose? Well, Occam's razor would lead me uh, to go in the direction of the electrical energy from water. It's really simple. 
of course, it's just a conjecture on my part. I have no evidence that that's the case, but you embarrass me by forcing me to take a position. So there you go. Oh, well, <laughs> As I, any I, good interviewer would do. <laughs> I appreciate. Um, I, I really like in, in the book you do a out on a limb meter. That's, I, uh, I think, oh, yes. Out on I a think limb. that's great. <laughs> um, um, yeah, well, there are some ideas presented in the book that are, you know, maybe a little bit less certain than others. And uh, there's no better way than to admit that, you know, I'm not sure about this one, but it's an idea to throw out and people can consider it if they like and otherwise not. So I'm, I'm sticking with this. I've got three books coming uh, and that's a, another, another story. And I will continue to use those icons, out on the limb icons, courtesy of my son who is, a professional artist who is, a, a, well, anybody who even thumbs through the fourth phase book uh, will, will see that. He's really gifted, but, you know, he's so busy remodeling his house right now uh, that it's difficult to get him to finish what I've been preparing. Um, so, please. B before we move on from um, ATP, I, I just wanted to get your opinion on, I mean, clearly it's at least associated with energy production. Do you think that the high negative charge on the phosphate group is sort of a nucleating site for this um, easy water? And Yes, and I do. Not, yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you, you, you're you really well read in all of this stuff. And you obviously think a lot. And the idea actually came from Gilbert Ling, uh, who, uh, uh, what he referred to it as a cardinal adsorbent. Um, and the idea was if you've got this uh, a, a phosphate group uh, and you have water nearby, the phosphate group would help to organize the structure, help to build it. And, you know, our view is a little different from Gilbert's view. Um, Gilbert's view is, is a, a stack of dipoles lining up. That was the structure that he was talking about. And we, we, we found it was wrong because it's neutral. And we found through our experimentation that this region is not neutral. Typically it's negatively charged. So the dipole idea couldn't fit. And, and, and that therefore, thereby we, we came upon a, a, a different, different kind of, of structure. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going astray. What was your original question on that? Oh, I just wanted to know what you thought ATP's role was. Oh, yeah, yeah, wasn't... yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, it's something like, like Gilbert's uh, uh, idea where you've got a phosphate and, and the structure builds from the phosphate. We also have evidence that the structure builds from phosphate groups, from sulfate groups, from uh, uh, typically if you have, a, for example, a, a protein with those charge groups on there, easy water will grow very readily or gel, it doesn't matter. If you have those groups on there, then the easy water will grow just as Gilbert Ling suggested that the dipoles will grow. So yeah, I, I think that Gilbert was, was correct and that those are, as he says, cardinal adsorbent sites adsorbing water, but actually um, I think sites um, of buildup of easy water. That's where it all starts.